Hey guys, my name is Tito. I make videos on personal finance on my other channel. On this channel, I talk about other things like today when I'll be reviewing the new Nollywood film that's in cinemas currently but will be on Netflix by Friday, Eleshin Oba. After the Oba passes on, his horseman, aka his Eleshin, prepares to sacrifice his life 30 days after, according to tradition, to escort the Oba's spirit to the afterlife. However, in the market, on the day he's meant to lay down his life, he sees a beautiful woman who he decides to marry and sleep with before leaving this world. Before the Eleshin is able to perform the ritual, however, he's arrested by colonial officers and fails in his assignment to escort the king's spirit into the afterlife to the disappointment of the king's people. Eleshin Oba is directed by the late director B. Bandele and is adapted from a play by Wale Shoyinka titled Death and the King's Horseman. Now first of all, this review will contain spoilers, so if you don't want to hear spoilers about Elessi Oba, maybe go and watch the movie first, then come back to watch this review. But if you don't care about that stuff, then here goes. People have been looking forward to this film for two major reasons. First of all, because it's based off a play written by Nobel laureate Wale Shoyinka, um, so there's that, and there's also the fact that this film was directed by the late B. Bandele, who sadly passed away just a few weeks ago. So because of those two reasons, lots of people have been looking forward to this film. Now, about the play that this film is based on Death and the King's Horseman. This is from its Wikipedia page. Death and the King's Horseman is a play by Wale Shoenka based on a real incident that took place in Nigeria during the colonial era. I didn't know that. The horseman of a Yoruba king was prevented from committing ritual... <clears throat> by the colonial authorities. Interesting facts right there. All that said and done, guys, let's talk about the performances in this film, Elessi Oba. Odunlade Adekola. Odunlade was really good in this film. Um, he's a good actor on a good day. He played, you know, Elessi, this individual who worked for the king and has to, you know, s sacrifice himself 30 days after the king's passing so as to help usher the king into the afterlife you know those of you who've seen the film you get it right and he did you know a good job in terms of conveying all the emotions because at the beginning of the film he's happy to be the person meant to carry out this right but then he falls for this young woman spontaneously has his way with her marries her whatever and then towards the end of the film he's not able to perform the ritual for whatever reason and he's really sad really you know agonized about the whole thing right and his emotions really did convey all those things and to be honest i wasn't even sure if that was odunlade as i was watching i didn't check out the names of the cast members before the movie and they really did a good job with the makeup his beard in particular and i was wondering like is it odunlade is it not him but i think the performance was so good that i couldn't even tell if it was him up until like much later when it became obvious that this is odunlade playing this character so he did a good job i wouldn't be surprised if there are award nominations for best actor for Odunlade in the future based off this performance. Next, Shafi Belu. This was the best and most diverse performance I've seen from Shafi Belu ever. Um, typically, she plays like a middle-aged, sophisticated woman. In this film, she was the Yaloja and she was speaking, she spoke Yoruba throughout. It was something I've never seen from Shafi Belu and I think she did it really well. It wasn't necessarily a mind-blowing performance, but as far as, you know, the things I've seen her do in the past, this was the most diverse and most impressive performance I've seen from her. And I also won't be surprised if she gets some Best Actress nominations out of the, this film. Omaomi Dada. Omaomi Dada, surprisingly in this film, I, I knew she was going to be in it. I had forgotten until I saw her, but I think in the trailer I saw, you know, her picture. And also when they screened this movie at Afrif, I saw her picture. You know, Omaomi, she always wears these flamboyant gowns at premieres. So I remembered you know, what she wore at Afrif, and I remembered she was in the film. In the movie itself, surprisingly, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think she had a single line of dialogue in the film. I don't recall hearing her voice. She had a very powerful role, but it was, seemed a bit smaller than I thought it would be. And once again, I'm quite surprised that we didn't hear her voice in the entire film. Maybe in the Netflix, Netflix version, we will hear her voice because I saw um, Anikulapo in the cinema, and I think we all know now that Anikulapo in the cinema was different from Anikulapo um, on Netflix. 
So who knows, maybe when it comes out on Netflix in a couple of days, when I see it again, maybe she'll have dialogue in that. But in the cinema version, she didn't say a word. I was surprised by that. So it's hard to rate her performance. The physical acting, I guess, was all right. Um, she did well. Moving on from her to Demi or Kolawo. Demi also did okay. I was a bit confused. Demi's performance was all right, but the character itself, I was quite confused. The character seemed rather conflicted and i didn't know if he was conflicted because he didn't want to continue his education in overseas in the uk or because he wasn't happy with what was going on you know in his hometown with his dad you know going to commit the uh, ritual or with his dad not being able to commit the ritual he seemed upset but i couldn't understand why um a dm's character i forget his name now the doctor i think he was studying medicine I couldn't understand why he was upset and what frustrated me even more was how and when he actually you know took his father's place in terms of the ritual to sacrifice himself there was a lot that confused me about that character and also <laughs> the outfit the suit that Demi's character wore I don't think it was accurate to the times you know I don't think it was accurate to 1943 it looked too sharp and too fitted for a suit for that era you know the colonial era so i had issues with the character which kind of translated into the performance i didn't really know what to make with the performance if i were to just score it i'd say it was an average one so yeah those were the like four main actors in the thing there were other actors in there jide kosoko was he was okay it was interesting to see him riding a bicycle <laughs> so he was all right um there was also brimo the singer brimo i was surprised to see him he did most of a lot of singing and chanting in the film and i think many people actually go and watch this film because of brimo he has quite a following taiwo ajai lyset and joke silver in the smallest roles i've ever seen them in and may i say taiwo ajai lyset's low cuts or low bearing top in this film the the cleavage was a lot i was like grandma what is actually going on right here that as well didn't seem accurate to the times that low cut top was controversial for 2022 imagine how controversial it would have been if, if somebody wore that in 1943 so that didn't really feel too accurate i'll come to the attire i'll come to the attire in this film a little later when i talk about what i liked about it but that low cut top on Taiwa Jai Lai set, wow, I was like, what is really going on here? It knocked like 20 to 30 years off Taiwa Jai Lai set's real age. I'm just happy she didn't influence the younger ones like Joker Silver. Her top wasn't as low, low bearing. It was weird. It was just weird. And their roles were so small. I, I don't even know what to make of it, but they were in the film anyway. So yeah, a shout out to my friend Debbie Ohiri who was one of the women who was singing in the entourage amongst the market women in the movie. Shout out to her as well. What I liked. I liked the colors in this film. It was a colorful movie and, you know, B. Bandele, that's one of the things I appreciate about his movies. I remember how colorful things were in um, Blood Sisters, which he co-directed. I think he directed two episodes and the other director directed two. And I just love his use of colors in his productions. And... I also liked the outfits, the attire, and the set designs. Things looked quite accurate to the times in this film, Elessi Obai really did look like colonial, Ni or yeah, colonial, not pre-colonial, colonial Nigeria, and I really appreciated that. In fact, I don't think that can be missed on anyone who watches this movie. How much effort went into them making this thing look as accurate to the times as, it, as they did. So yeah, that's what I liked about the film. What I didn't like, um, it felt like this story was quite linear. It was just like one way, one way traffic. You have this guy who's meant to perform this ritual. He's going to perform the ritual, sees this beautiful girl, wants to sleep with her. Then later that gets the approval to sleep with her, sorry, to marry her, marries her later that evening, sleeps with her, then goes on to perform the ritual later on that night, is not able to perform the ritual, gets arrested. His son shows up out of nowhere then takes his father's place, he learns about it, and then he's upset and he sacrifices himself or whatever. It felt very linear. And another thing is that it felt a bit slow paced. Yeah, I can't lie to you, I was fighting sleep a couple of times while watching this film. I didn't fall asleep, but I felt sleep calling me, partly because the pacing of this film was quite slow. And 
I kind of understand because the era that this film was set in, you know, and the environment it was set in, in Yoruba culture, people talked, you know, in a long-winded form. You know, rather than saying things straightforward, they'd use adages and proverbs and whatnot to get their point across. And, I mean, people with a particular taste or that have a taste for those kinds of things, they would enjoy it. But if you're a contemporary or modern, I don't know, movie watcher or cinema goer, it will feel like, you know, the story or the film is dragging in the, at those points. So, yeah, those are the things I didn't like about it. The third thing that I didn't like was the fact that it didn't feel like this film had a major turning point. There was no like wow moment in the film for me personally. I don't know about you guys, but I didn't feel like there was a wow moment or a moment in the film that just blew my mind, so to speak. So yeah, who should see it? See a lesson Oba if you are a fan of Yoruba culture and Yoruba language. Yeah, I think you'll enjoy it based on that. Also, if you're a fan of Nigerian stage plays, particularly the ones in Yoruba, you know, the types of plays that they show or yeah, that they show quite often at Terra Culture. You'll probably enjoy this based on that. Although if you're a fan of Terra Culture plays, then you've probably seen the play itself, Death on the King's Horseman. Anyway, uh, also if you're a fan of Wale Shoenka himself and his work, you know, his books or his plays, then I think you'll enjoy this movie, Elesin Oba. And that's another thing. Is it pronounced Elesin or Eleshin? In conclusion, Elesi Oba felt a bit bland to me. It lacked a spark, right? It would have been better if they had like or added a modern or contemporary feel to the movie, but I doubt if Wale Shoenka would have allowed them to tamper with his work in that way. So hence, it has probably stayed this way for decades and decades, right? And as a result, it will probably only appeal to a few people. It seems like a niche type of um, movie that's adapted from a stage play. Good luck to all involved. Anyway, I, this film will probably still get loads and loads of nominations, um, movie and film nominations when award season rolls around in a few months time. But yeah, not my cup of tea. And it doesn't help that Anikulapo came out just a couple of weeks ago and that was a much better and better well, better well, a more well received um, movie. And the sim they're only similar in the fact that, you know, they're both predominantly Yoruba. Anikulapo is like 100% Yoruba. And while this film, Eles Yoruba, is like 65-70% Yoruba, but you can understand how you can compare two of them. I don't know if as you were watching Eles Yoruba, you were thinking of Anikulapo as well. Let me know if you were in the comment section down below. Um, I'm curious to hear what you guys thought of the film. So yeah, let me know what your, your thoughts about the movie in the, in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. It will probably be a long one judging by all the things I've been saying, right? Thanks for sticking with me this long. I didn't explain the background, yeah, at the start of the video. I'm testing out this background for my relationship videos and um, I didn't have the energy to tear it down and set up the movie review background, which is why I just decided to roll with this and it's been it's been a challenge, but um, I guess I'll see what the output is like. You can also let me know what you think about this background in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please like it by clicking on the like button just underneath the video. It would really mean the world to me. Most of you, you watch my videos, but you don't like. It does mean a lot if you engage with the content by liking, by leaving a comment, by sharing with friends and family who you feel may enjoy the content as well. And also, most importantly, by subscribing to the channel as well by clicking on the black button subscribe button youtube has changed the color of the subscribe button it's no longer red it's now black so please click on that share subscribe like also check out my other videos i also do relationship videos on this channel as well as other movie reviews to check out the playlists of both those categories you can click the card in the corner of the screen i also have a personal finance channel which i think you should check out as well because personal finance is very important um, the link to that channel will be in the description box down below i really can't wait to go back to my old setup you know because this one feels a bit restrictive i keep on hitting this microphone the sound is probably better but i don't like the fact that this microphone is in my way anyway guys thank you guys so much for watching leave me a comment down below like subscribe share i will see you in the next review oh also check out my review of um the one for sarah which also came out this weekend i reviewed that or i filmed the review for that just before this one be sure to check that out too thanks for the final time guys i will catch you in the next one. Take care.